Now that the general firearm season is closed, Jared Mills is able to start thinking about his next move on the new farm. Both he and Josh Sparks have bow tags, and combined with the burning desire to catch up with at least one of the bucks on the new farm, they set out on a river adventure. Well, it's about 12.15 here. It's the afternoon of December 22nd, and Josh and I are getting a little creative this afternoon and uh, a little more aggressive as well. I've talked about it before, but this farm doesn't have any food to speak of, so I'm trying to get a little bit creative in the way I hunt these deer late season. And the plan is to take the canoe and uh, go in the river around the peninsula on the back side, on the downwind side of it, and get really tight to where those deer are bedded. And if we can get in clean, I think we'll have a really good hunt. But that's going to be the key. There's going to be about 40 yards probably between the river and the tree stand that we have to get to and, and hang one stand. Josh has his bow as well. We have more gear than you can imagine trying to fit in this canoe, but uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, there's one deer in particular that Josh is after and we've encountered him a number of times. That's Rex. He's probably the more likely uh, buck to encounter, but there's some other good deer that have been through this farm through the season too. So I'm excited to see how this goes and uh, hopefully uh, we get in there clean. It's about 2.30 now, so obviously that was a, a long journey getting in here. As far as we know, we didn't spook any deer, which was my main goal for getting into the spot. So hopefully that's a good sign and, and not a sign of there not being any deer in the, in the area, but I've been in this spot twice now. It's my third time in, and I've had good hunts every time I've sat here. Both times I've encountered mature deer. So I'm hoping that string of luck continues. The, one of the other reasons I wanted to do this uh, river access tonight is because we got some cold weather coming. I don't think it's gonna be above freezing for a while. And so there's a good chance with as shallow as it is, uh, there'll be, it'll start to ice over soon. So it's kind of like, if we want to try it this year, it was now or never. So it was a, a good experience. We had to at least try it once. I'm not sure how anxious I am to try that again, but you never know. Could have a great hunt tonight and it'll all be worth it. about 3.40 right now, so we got a full hour before sunset. And uh, once again, Josh and I can't get much closer than that. That's the deer I call Rex, and he was, like I said earlier, he was the most likely candidate tonight. And uh, that's the deer that Josh has been trying to kill on this farm when he's been hunting with me. And probably, I don't know, 50 yards out, Rex decided to stop and feed. So the, and the does kept coming, so the gap uh, got wider between them. And uh, one of the does, where we crossed the trail, coming off the river, picked up our ground set and cut in towards our tree. And just got nervous and ran back that way. But if, it was just one of those things that, that was so close, if Rex would have just stayed on him, he would have already been in bow range by the time she spooked. Rex didn't seem all that spooked. It was more the does. Rex didn't really know what happened, so. Let's hope for a good last hour of the night.
Can you shoot right there? is right there. Don't move. You see him? Well, it's like deja vu. That Rex deer, he's, uh, I think he's got nine lives or something because we've gotten so close so many times. He was following a doe again. Um, and what, 40 minutes probably after our first encounter, he, he came right back in with this doe. They came on the opposite side of the tree this time, but there's trails all over in here, but there's one trail at like five yards and unfortunately the dove took that trail and she got to I mean, right below us basically. He eventually spooked as well so I think we're probably done for the night. We have another 20 minutes left till uh, the actual sunset time so we'll hang in here but I don't have much confidence in the rest of the night. I've been shooting Hoyt bows almost exclusively since 1997. That is way before I started Midwest Whitetail. The people at Hoyt drew me to the company initially, but their commitment to producing the best, most accurate bows on the market is what kept me there. Many of the employees at Hoyt are bow hunters, so they take the quality of the bows they produce very personally. The Fuse Cybex single pin slider is easily adjustable, offers a rock solid lockdown, and a bright pin that is easy to see in low light. All fuse sites are rugged and purpose-built for serious whitetail hunters. Once you release the string, your roll is complete. Now it is up to the arrow and the broadhead to get the job done. This is no place to take chances on unproven quality. I have been to the Easton plant and I have seen the pains that they take to assure that every single arrow is perfect. Why trust your whole season to anything less? There are only three ways you can get busted in a tree stand. The deer can smell you, hear you, or see you. To reduce the chances of being seen, we wear the best camouflage we can. Realtree's open patterns perfectly blend into the hardwood timbers that we hunt. Josh's nemesis, his great white whale, the buck called Rex, gave him the slip again. But it was a moral victory, if there is such a thing, because he and Jared were nearly able to kill this mature buck during the late season on a farm with no food. Nearly all of our late season hunts take place on food sources, and that is where we find Mike Reed during the season's final two weeks, sitting on a cornfield on his southern Iowa farm. Well, it's Monday, December 25th. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, had all the family activities this morning, and I've got my uh, brother out here again filming me tonight. We're in a new spot, third night out in a row. We've had two good sits the last couple nights. Um, 40 plus deer each night, and it snowed yesterday morning. Um, so, about 36 hours ago, and it is tore up with tracks. So, I'm imagining last night, you know, quite a few deer came out, and um, it's good to see this sign. I'm pretty excited to see what comes out. Yeah, anyway, excited to be out here. It's about 2 o'clock, 
Uh, sunset's about 4.45, so we've got a solid three hours to hunt. And uh, with any luck, one of these big shooters will show up or a new buck that we don't know. That's going to wrap up tonight. Uh, we're out of camera light, have just a few minutes left of legal shooting. It's a pretty close call. We had uh, the buck I call 66 come out, and um, I'm just not quite ready to shoot him with a muzzle loader. So I was trying to be patient, wait for him to get into bow range. The closest he got was 50. He ended up being a pretty good set overall. Excited to see that deer on the hoof. It's the first time this year. He did break off one of his splits off his G3. Um, I'm not saying I won't shoot him with a gun. Uh, by the end of the year, I've got eight more um, days to hunt. So I'm trying to be pretty picky. You know, I definitely would have shot him with a bow. And um, anyway, it is what it is. Came close. So this is going to wrap up this Christmas weekend for me. Um, my brother and I will be back out here next Friday. We'll start hunting Friday, and I can hunt Friday through Wednesday. And the temperatures look great. We've got some low single-digit temperatures. So... Hopefully something new shows up, or hopefully I can get on the hoss or one of these other deer. Anyway, we'll catch back up with you guys uh, next weekend. That same evening, 100 miles to the south in northern Missouri, Seth Sheldon is again hunting the same cornfield where he encountered three shooters back in late November. Well, it's Christmas Day, and instead of sitting inside sipping on hot cocoa, I'm out here freezing my butt off in the tree stand. For those of you who have been uh, up to date on my videos, you know I'm after a few different bucks. And I'm hoping with these cold temps that one of them is on their feet tonight. So I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that by the end of the night I'll have a nice little Christmas present to take home. <laughs> at the buck I call Captain Hook work his way across the field all the way in to the timber beside me here and I had one little opening at 40 yards and I just blew it I think my arrow did not look good I'm pretty sure I hit a branch man I finally get an opportunity because it's been a while but I think I just blew it Still just sh shaking. It's so cold out here. And when you get a little bit of nerves in you, it just makes you rattled. I still got about a half hour left of light. I'm almost positive I missed that buck. I am gonna get down 
after this set and obviously get my arrow see if there's any blood on it but I'm just hoping I didn't accidentally hit it in a bad spot if I hit it at all it definitely didn't look like I did after finding his arrow Seth quickly realizes that he did in fact hit the buck and the trail in the snow is easy to follow well here he is we actually ran out of uh, lights and our flashlights and our phone died so we had to run back to the house get batteries and then we tracked him up well actually my girlfriend tracked him I can't see blood so thankfully for her we were able to recover this buck I got extremely lucky because my arrow like you saw deflected and I actually hit him in the leg it went up in and got vitals so it's a pretty buck especially on Christmas so Merry Christmas to me and that pretty much puts a wrap to my season. Versatility is one of the most important features of a good food plot seeder. It must be able to plant a wide range of seed sizes at a wide range of rates and place them in the ground at the correct depth for each application. The RTP Genesis is ideal in each of these regards. Versatility is one of the things we like most about this seeder. Frigid Forge Plow Down Clover is one of the most revolutionary products they sell. You ideally frost seed this blend of fast growing clovers during the winter and then mow it down and till it under when preparing to plant Big and Beastie the next summer. The clover provides much needed forage for the deer during the summer and much needed nitrogen for the Big and Beastie once you plow it down. Sleepless nights spent waiting for daylight only to follow a weak blood trail are a thing of the past with the devastating performance of the new Wasp Jackhammer Broadhead. With its one and three quarter inch cutting diameter, this head is the perfect combination of destruction and penetration. I'm thinking back and I don't believe I can recall a single time when deer busted me in a ground blind when I was running an Ozonics unit. One of the reasons I hunt from blinds is to contain my scent around food plots and in areas where the wind swirls. Nothing makes this more possible than adding an Ozonics to the gear list. 140 miles to the northwest, in southern Iowa, Caleb and Taylor Byers are also hunting late season food sources. Well, it's December 29th this evening and I decided to come back to my standing bean plot uh, just for the simple fact that I've seen so many deer last time, just not the right deer. We've seen two four-year-olds that will be really after next year, but uh, we're basically after two different mature bucks, uh, split brow being our number one target. So much history with this deer, I'd just like to put it to rest, but he's kind of been a little MIA on the cameras, but we don't have a lot up right now just because I feel like the least amount that I'm in here, the better with with uh, most of the deer bedding right around this area. So um, the next few days are supposed to be highs in the negative. So I feel like the need to feed tonight is going to be even more dramatic. Uh, with a little luck, we'll be wrapping our tag around split brow, maybe even get him tonight. So um, we're going to settle in and try to stay warm. It's actually, you know, warmer than it's been the last few days. It's a high of 16 a day, so uh, definitely cold enough to still get them on their feet. The same giant four-year-old that Caleb saw the previous evening comes out again, severely testing the hunter's resolve to shoot only five-year-old and older bucks. In most parts of the country, this would be crazy. But where Caleb hunts, there is at least a decent chance of seeing the buck again next year. Well, i got about an hour left, and it's been a good hunt so far. We've seen Insider and a small buck and then a doe all came out together. So I'm gonna get ready for the floodgates to open, hopefully cross our fingers that we see split brow yet tonight.
Well, that is the buck that I've been after for since we, well, he was a four and a half year old buck when we bought the farm in 2014. And he's now a seven and a half year old giant that I've been after. And I'll talk more about the story if I hit him. You know, I, I was sold on him, put it right on him. So hopefully, hopefully I got him. Well, Taylor just uh, drove out to the blind. Uh, it was a perfect plan. We didn't have a babysitter for this evening, so I mean that's kind of the kind of the trade-off you get this time of year with the holidays. You know, a lot of people are busy, so a uh, big thanks to our family for helping out for the whole season. It just so happened the one time they weren't here, I had the opportunity at the buck, one of the bucks we've been chasing all year long. I look back at the footage, and you know it's last light so obviously you can't get a good uh description of where i hit him but it definitely looked like he hunched up like i hit him pretty good so um we're just gonna walk out through here and uh go to where we think he was and look for blood uh cross my fingers i close the chapter on just a legend of our farm so we'll head out here and look there's blood right here that's awesome. There he is, and he's dead right there. Man, he was, we well, have to be careful with this one, but. He's an absolute stud, that's for sure. Well, it's the next morning, we got him out here. Uh, it's, it's definitely harder to get a better look at him with the antler falling off, but I can tell you one thing, I could not be more excited to be standing behind this buck. Uh, like we've said, a true legend of our farm, and we've been hunting him all all this year and, and many more years at that. But, uh, so not only is this buck seven and a half years old, but we have so much history with him. He's literally been on the farm since we bought it back in 2014, and he was a four and a half year old buck that year. We actually had two different encounters with him that year, uh, but moving forward to 2015, he was definitely gonna be on our hit list. We knew that he was gonna be five and a half years old and a fun buck to chase. So as luck would have it, we were hunting a buck we call Minnie, and he stepped out in the clover plot and gave me a very tough decision on whether I wait for Minnie to come out, because we had Minnie on a pretty strict pattern. Uh, but when he came out and came into that scrape and worked completely across the clover field, came into that scrape and started throwing clover everywhere, my mind was made up right there that I was gonna try and harvest this buck. But uh, this buck's always had a knack to live. He, uh, he ended up ducking my string and ducked around 10 inches is what we were guessing. And I ended up hitting, hitting him in the dead zone. And it's, it's definitely completely healed up now, but after the, after the hit, you could definitely see exactly where it was every time we got him on trail camera. But uh, that's kind of the funny thing. He, he didn't even show back up on our farm for another two weeks. He's always been a wild card. You never know where he's gonna be and you never know why. He just kind of shows up and you hope you're in the right spot at the right time. With him being our number one hit list buck and being a wild card, we weren't sure if we were even gonna see the buck, but it was a chance we were willing to take and it definitely paid off in a big way. So the pure excitement after pulling the trigger, well, not after pulling the trigger, after finding the blood, I mean, this is what it's all about. Nonetheless, our season's been made right here with, uh, with harvesting a buck we call split brow. You are only as good as your weakest link, and that certainly holds true when you consider your staying power during cold days in the tree. Feet are often the first to give up, so buying the warmest pack boots like those from Cabela's is a great investment that pays off in longer stand sessions and ultimately more tags filled. I've learned over the years that you never regret buying high quality products. Sure, you can build a blind for a reasonable cost, and that might get you by for a while, but for a truly long-term solution, nothing beats a well-made fiberglass blind like the Redneck Buck Palace. Nikon offers a wide range of optics for the hunting community. 
From laser rangefinders to scopes and binoculars, the technology they put into their products has always been cutting edge. We depend on Nikon for non-stop performance regardless of weather or light conditions. Coolers aren't just for the beach or exclusively for family vacation. They are for any time you need to keep something cold. When hanging stands during the dog days of summer, we depend on our American-made Grizzly coolers to keep refreshments cold so we can stick with it until the job is done. Once again, Josh and I can't get much closer than that. That's the deer I call Rex, and he was, like I said earlier, he was the most likely candidate tonight. After passing several good bucks, uh, a couple different four-year-olds, uh, with him being our number one hit list buck and being a wild card, we weren't sure if we were even going to see the buck, but it was a chance we were willing to take and it definitely paid off in a big way. With one more week left in the season, I'm still hunting most evenings, but with little food on the farm, the action is very slow. Jared Mills and Mike Reed are seeing plenty of deer and hope that very soon the right ones will come within range. Others on our team are also hunting their way carefully through the late season. The deer are different now. They've been through the rut, they've been through a firearm season, and they are wary. Hunting them successfully now requires the greatest of caution and the perfect conditions. This is nothing like the carefree days of the early rut when just about any strategy would work. The plan now has to be perfect. The margin for error is razor thin. It is nothing like the easy days when we were chasing November.